Yeah, hi everyone. So last week we talked a lot about model evaluation. So we covered topics like evaluating the performance of a model and constructing confidence intervals and so forth, which is a super important topic. However, we are not done with model evaluation yet. Uh, there are some more lectures or concepts we really have to cover because they are really the ones um, that we need in practice. Because usually in practice, it's not only about the evaluation of a particular model. We want to find a good model in the first place that we want to evaluate, right? So in this lecture, we are going to cover cross-validation techniques. That means um, techniques for tuning hyperparameters and uh, techniques then for comparing the different models coming from the different hyperparameters, which is a concept also known as model selection. So in this lecture, the focus will be on cross-validation. Yeah, it looks like uh, we have a lot of topics to cover this week, but don't worry, these are rather short topics or subtopics. So first in this video, I will briefly go over the lecture overview after this slide. Um, then in the next video, we will talk about hyperparameters. This will be very quick, just to yeah, reintroduce the concept of hyperparameters and explain how they are different from model parameters. Then we will take a look at k-fold cross-validation for model evaluation and some other um, cross-validation techniques. Um, then we will take a look at how that works in practice. So I will show you some code examples using Python and scikit-learn. Um, and then yeah, we will talk about cross-validation for model selection. So note, um, I underlined it here to um, yeah, highlight the difference. So first we will talk about cross-validation for model evaluation and then for model selection where this is um, for hyperparameter tuning. And um, then I will also show you some code examples, how we can do that in scikit-learn using uh, grid search and randomized search. And then uh, we will talk about the law of parsimony. So yeah, uh, looking at the one standard error method, it's um, yeah, taking the concept behind k-fold cross-validation and applying it or combining it with the idea of keeping things simple. Um, and then I will also show you some code examples for the one standard error method, as well as um, repeated k-fold cross-validation, which is kind of um, similar to the repeated holdout method that we covered in um, last week's lectures. So yeah, um, the overview now. So long time ago, we covered uh, bias variance decomposition, how it relates to overfitting and underfitting. Then we covered the basic holdout method, and that was mainly last week where we discussed it in the context also of confidence intervals. So we talked about the normal approximation interval. Then last week we talked about also the repeated holdout method, which is just um, yeah, repeating the holdout method multiple times after changing the random seed. And then a big uh, focus was on empirical confidence intervals, namely using um, bootstrapping. So this was mostly all for model evaluation. Now we are talking more about model selection. But first we will yeah, introduce the concept of cross-validation, which we can also use for model evaluation. And then uh, after we yeah, are familiar with cross-validation, we will apply it also to model selection. So in this lecture, the focus will be on cross-validation for hyperparameter tuning and model selection. So yeah, because also some students already asked me what techniques I would recommend. So here's an overview I made um, some time ago also for myself. It's like based on doing a lot of reading, what techniques I would recommend in practice. So um, some of the techniques we haven't covered yet, but we will cover them in this uh, lecture and in the next lecture. So um, there are these different tasks. So first I would um, divide everything up into different tasks or um, yeah, problems that we want to solve. Oops. So one would be um, performance estimation. So here, this is more about yeah, uh, estimating the performance of the model without um, considering, let's say, model selection or, or things like that. It's just like if you already know what model you want to use and yeah, you want to just evaluate the performance of a model, these are techniques I would consider for performance estimation. I will talk through them after yeah, going through the categorization here. Another task is model selection. So that is um, including hyperparameter tuning. And if you recall from last week's lecture, um, 
there's a difference um, based on how much we care about relative performance and absolute performance. So this would be above here. This would be more for the absolute model performance. And for the model selection, we don't really need to get the absolute performance right here. Um, what's um, already sufficient is have, having the relative performance estimated well. So that means that we can correctly rank the models by performance. So if we have multiple models, model one, for example, performs better than model two. This performs um, maybe better than model three and so forth. So we can um, order the models by performance so that we can pick the best one. And after we've selected the best one, we can then still um, select, uh, estimate the absolute model performance. Another um, aspect uh, though is model and algorithm comparison. So if someone gives you a model, you have a other model and not like talking about a uh, model selection where we tune a model, you just consider you have two models could be from different algorithms and you are interested in comparing them. Or you may also be interested in comparing different algorithms to each other. So recall the example I covered um, last week where we talked about email um, clients we could develop when we, uh, for example, have a spam filter built into our email application. Um, we want to have an algorithm that can learn well. Let's say if the user um, marks uh, emails as spam, the algorithm built into the email program should learn from the user behavior. So we not only need a good model that does a good prediction, but we also need a good algorithm because um, the algorithm has to learn from the user behavior. So but that is a topic we will cover next week. So in this week we will be mostly focused on model selection um, using cross-validation. So yeah, let me go a little bit more into the finer grained um, categorization here. So if we care about performance estimation, how well a, mo a model performs in terms of its generalization performance, if you have a large data set, I would say the two-way holdout method is actually sufficient. So you split a data set into training and test sets. And assuming you have a large data set, you probably won't incur this uh, pessimistic bias we talked about for the training set um, being too small. So if you have a large data set, assume the training set is really large, so you don't have to worry about the pessimistic bias. And also the test set will be then sufficiently large that you get, get a reliable estimate. If you care about confidence intervals, for a large data set, I would also say the normal approximation interval is um, sufficient. The bootstrap ones may be too expensive depending on what type of model you have and if you have a very large data set. If you have a small data set, um, yeah, you can perform k-fold cross-validation for the model evaluation. It's a little bit more efficient in how it uses the data. Um, you don't necessarily need an independent test set for that if you don't do any um, model tuning. So here, uh, if you do k-fold cross-validation, you have a small data set and you don't do any model tuning, you don't need necessarily an independent test set. If your data set is super small, you can also consider leaf one out cross-validation, which is a, yeah, I would say a special case of k-fold cross-validation where k equals one, but we will talk more about in this lecture. So um, more about that uh, later, so don't worry about the details yet. And for a small uh, uh, data set for confidence intervals, you could, for example, use the 0.632 plus bootstrap on that data set. So again, here you don't need an independent test set. Okay, so and for deep learning here, you could also um, consider bootstrapping the test set. So that's another method we talked about, uh, but I would say normal approximation of bootstrapping the test set gives you almost identical results as we also have seen last lecture. Um, yeah, for model selection, if we have a large data set, we can do something that is analogous to the two-way holdout method. We can use the three-way holdout method. So here we split the data set into a train, validation, and a test set, where we use the um, training set for model training, and then the validation set for uh, model tuning. So we uh, train the different models for different hyperparameter settings, and then we use the validation set 
to compare the different models and after the comparison we use the test set to get the final performance estimate. So we talked about that also uh, last video, so uh, last lecture, sorry. So we used the training and validation sets for the model selection and the test set for the final model evaluation and that works fine if we have a large data set. If the data set is rather small we would use the k-fold cross-validation approach. Note, uh, note here um, this is uh, with an independent test set where here I said without because um, here we don't have tuning so no tuning and here we have tuning so we uh, tune or do the model selection using k-fold cross-validation and then after the tuning we need the test set to evaluate the performance of the model. If the data set is very small we can again use the leave one uh, out approach which is more efficient with um, small data sets. But yeah, again, these are topics we will talk about later. Um, I probably shouldn't go over these right now because that will be too much information here. We will also discuss that in more detail uh, next week. Okay, so this is just the overview of some of the recommendations. Um, yeah, and then uh, we will now continue with a brief introduction or reintroduction to hyperparameters and then talk about cross-validation in more detail. Thank you.